Hi there, welcome to my design to operate video. Today we're going to be looking at the full end-to-end -end process from SAP in the supply chain space. Now recently I was delivering a guest lecture at uh, one of our universities here in Melbourne, which I do for uh, the University of Melbourne, uh, RMIT and the Swinburne University. And uh, one of the students was asking me, interestingly, what is the full end-to-end -end scope of supply chain with SAP? And it's a really interesting question, and it's actually one that's quite difficult to answer. The reason it's difficult to answer is because it is so broad. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you through some of the different elements of that full end-to-end, -end, what we call designed-to-operate uh, scenario. Now, when I look at this, we have a diagram we... Um, affectionately call our design to operate snake, uh, obviously because of the snake uh, look and feel of this. But essentially, when we think about this, we actually have multiple capabilities across the full end-to-end -end scope. So for instance, from designing a product, to planning that product, to procuring, to make it, to manufacture it, of course, and the full manufacturing, delivering that, and obviously operating is where we, we talk about the asset maintenance of that, uh, when the, the item is actually at the customer. But of course, that also covers off um, asset maintenance for uh, items you may have purchased as an organization, as opposed to ones you may have created yourself. So let's take a look at some of these different elements. You'll see here that nowadays we have a full cyclic way of looking at our whole design to operate um, scenario. And you'll notice that in the, every element of these, we have planning, between each stage. Gone are the days where we set up a plan, we run with that plan, and let's see what happens, whether it's successful or not. Today, it's all about intelligent enterprise, taking our customer experience data, taking our planning data and our operational data, what people often refer to as X data for experience and O for operational data, and bringing those into the intelligent design. It also brings together this concept, and you can see here our little uh, robots, this concept of what we call the digital twin. The digital twin is essentially copying and having a digital version of everything that we do. Whether that is an asset, a piece of machinery, a component we've created, or things like that, or any other element such as purchase orders and, uh, and so on. So, let's start off with a bit of design. I want to show you uh, where we start with this. So, again, we cover every aspect of this, all the way through innovation, project engineering, product costing, handover, all the way through to insights as well. I can't show you each of these elements but uh, due to time, but uh, we're happy to do some deep dive if that's what you want. Uh, so here obviously we can see the visual enterprise of the, of, of the product. Visual enterprise allows us to physically see what that product looks like, in this case it's a, a, a pump valve. And we can take a look at that to see exactly uh, what's going on with it, what its threshold settings are and all that kind of stuff as a, uh, and things. Skip ahead a bit too far there. Uh, so basically, we can from our business insights area, we can skip into any of these different areas. And we can see, obviously, uh, how the whole thing is put together from a production point of view and everything else, all the way through that area. So innovation to project engineering to costing to handover to business insights. Obviously, going back and looking at all of this stuff. So again, that's great from a product design point of view, but obviously, we want to plan to sell that product as well to our, our customers. So let's take a look at that now. So obviously we have our, our plan to plan the demand and supply. Uh, this is where our uh, IBP um, product comes in, integrated business planning. And of course we can manage and track those, those purchase orders and a little later you'll see the receiving into the warehouse of those. But let's go into the planning area. So here I can see my demand plan. What are we planning to actually sell? Which obviously derives down into our supply plan so we know how much we need to make, manufacture and so on. To, uh, to actually bring those products in. So from a manufacturing point of view, obviously we've got that fully covered as well and SAP is very strong in the, the manufacturing space. Hence we have many processes that are covered here all the way from scheduling uh, sub-essentially sub process, assembly processes, excuse me, all the way through to uh, taking the, 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 uh, the orders and of course scheduling those <coughs> in the solution. So here again we can see our our valve and uh, how it's been scheduled in the in the solution, how we can actually make the, the, uh, the production order and start it and get it through there. Uh, if we move on a little bit more, we can start talking about uh, how do we finish the, the product itself. And again, we can go back here, start the production order, so on and so forth. 
Uh, let's move on again. We could go back to planning. How are we tracking with that manufacturing against our sales orders and our distribution plan? Let's go into the deliver area here. And this is where we start talking about the, uh, the two logistics of everything, of course, from transportation planning, our warehouse execution, and of course, the tracking and tracing of all these things that are moving around all the way from, again, design through to manufacturing and, of course, uh, delivery. So let's take a look at transportation planning. It's our transportation planning uh, uh, tool or module, which we we'll call it. And again, we can see the loads that we actually have to bring in. So these are inbound uh, purchase orders. Excuse me, just click out of that. Uh, and we can see that the route they need to take from point to point. And we can see that down the bottom here, the various freight orders, as we call them, the orders that need to be executed to complete that work. If we pop out of there and go into our warehouse, our warehouse will show us when those orders are supposed to be either dropped off or in this case, actually picked for customers. So we can see here what we call our transportation cockpit. What our transportation cockpit tells us is all of the vehicles or transportation units, as we call them in the system, how their, their picking is gone. Has it been released in a wave? Is the picking, picking happened? Has the vehicle arrived at the door? Has it been loaded? So on and so forth. So we get full visibility of what's happening from an execution point of view as well. From a track and trace point of view, this is where we start taking the data uh, and you would have seen the, the planning of this, obviously, in the transportation point of view. But this is now tracking those items actually physically via devices so we can see what's actually happening. And if there are any delays, we can actually see where those delays are. And if I go back to my plan here, if I go back into here and I can see if I manage my purchase orders, for instance, I can see here that I've got my couple of purchase orders that are coming through for the control head for my valve. Uh, but we've got a delay, so I can go into that delay and I can actually see exactly what's happening and therefore what's being impacted from a planning point of view. So as I mentioned, it's a cyclic uh, process these days. It's not just about uh, a single way of looking at things. It's a full cycle. We continue to plan, plan, plan all the way around. Now we'll, let's go into the operate section and where the operate section is, uh, is all about assets and how do we actually get those assets on board how do we uh, have digital um, predictions of their assets and their failures and things like that? So let's go and take a look at a prediction, see when we think that the assets may actually have an issue coming up. So again, we have a dashboard here where we can see everything that's happening with that particular item. We can see uh, what its temperatures are and all those types of things. And of course, uh, performance uh, of that asset is pretty important as well. We want to make sure it's performing as it should. Where is it? Does it have any alerts for us? And those types of things in here. So we can actually see, okay, we may have a potential issue with some of these items and we can go and actually uh, respond to those uh, those items. Uh, if we want asset improvements as well, we can feed that back. Here we can see obviously what's happening with it from an improvement point of view, all the way through, again, the complete cycle. So let's talk about some customer uh, stories with some of these examples. So when we talk about the manufacturing and delivering, obviously Coca-Cola in this region known as Coca-Cola Amatil uh, have recently implemented their full warehouse management uh, solution on EWM or Extended Warehouse Management. And they've also brought in their transportation planning as well. So our transportation planning is all done on the, uh, on the e EWM and uh, PM solution. And when we look at all this, of course, it's really important to understand that we have um, several pillars that underlie all of this technology. When we talk about our snake diagram, all of the design, plan, manufacture, procure, etc., all of these different capabilities are all underlined by standard uh, pillars, if you will, of our technology. And those pillars are really talking about integration out of the box. What does that mean? Integration out of the box means all of these different capabilities all talk to each other, all in one solution. You don't need a separate point solution for each of these areas for planning, for scheduling, so on and so forth. We have a cloud native architecture. And what we mean by that is wherever possible, we place our, our technology on the cloud. Uh, so when we talk about our assets, um, we talk about our planning solutions and everything else, they're all uh, obviously cloud based. But we also have uh, one of our pillars being consumer grade experience. And you've seen from some of the screens there, they're all now very nice modern UI uh, for our, for our uh, customers. Uh, we have applied intelligence and the idea of applied intelligence is wherever possible we use machine learning. So when we're talking about when are our assets or when, are our, when does our maintenance need to be done, uh, what is our planning, what's the best fit for our production uh, planning for our uh, 
for our statistical forecasting and all those types of things. They're all parts of the intelligent design of how this works. And we also have a next generation data management uh, solution. Obviously, we, you may have heard me talk about before S4 HANA, uh, HANA part being, of course, how that data is stored and uh, how we can play with that data in different ways. And we also have the, the concepts of having a data hub on the cloud and uh, governance across all that data as well. Uh, another a pillar that we have, of course, is the open platform using SAP Cloud Platform to extend these capabilities. Obviously, it's great having the, all these uh, basic capabilities here, but when we need to, we need to extend and make our differentiators for our organizations. We can extend that capability using the Cloud Platform. And all of this is done with an eye to security, having security embedded within all of our solutions. And as we all know, SAP is very strong in the security space to see exactly what's happened, when, where, for each of our transactions and uh, processes. So just a quick summary, our full design to operate uh, suite from SAP, obviously design, manufacture, deliver and operate. Thanks very much for your time.